Good morning, everyone, and welcome to uh, today's session of World Insights. Um, today, we're going to be looking at the book of Psalms, Psalms 119, verse 11. The psalmist says, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Now, it's important for us to also understand that um, we can't hide text in our heart. You can't hide those um, memorized scriptures in your heart. So it begs the question, how do you hide God's word in your heart? It's important. The key word, the word of God. <clears throat> and that also takes me to the fact that there's a huge difference between the text that we read and the word of God. <laughs> I know this sounds like tautology to some of us, but uh, I'll break it down. Now, it's also important for us to understand that there's a huge difference between memorization and meditation. Memorization and meditation. What is the difference between a believer and a non-believer? A non-believer can actually pick up the Bible and read. As a matter of fact, a lot of um, philosophers, some philosophers know the scriptures more than any more than some believers. That's the truth. They will quote the scriptures. Some of them can quote a lot of scriptures by us. So what's the difference? The devil also quoted the scriptures. In the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 10, <clears throat> when he took Jesus Christ to a high place and he told him, jump, and he now told him, for it is written, he said, he shall give his angels charge over thee. The devil quoted the scriptures. So what is the difference between the devil and a believer, an unbeliever, a philosopher and a believer? What's, what is the difference? Meditation. It is in the place of meditation that God reveals the secrets of the kingdom. It is in the place of meditation that the word of God is extracted from the scriptures, from the texts. The word of God is in the texts, which means the word of God goes beyond the text. So when we are reading the text, let me give us an example. Growing up, I, uh, <clears throat> in my early teen days, I, um, I stumbled upon the, my book of Bible stories. I don't know. A lot of us might um, know that book. It was yellow in color, sort of. I still remember that. And I started reading those stories. Those stories were interesting. Understanding that those were Bible stories, I now decided, no, these stories, they seem shortened. Of course, they were shortened. So I, I picked up um, my mom's Bible. I started from Genesis. The stories were sweet. They were, they, they were so interesting. So there will be times that um, there will be some domestic chores that uh, uh, you know <clears throat> my sister uh, would be doing, and then she'll be like, "How oh, can she be the only one doing this?" And then she want to meet my mom and tell her, "Can't I come and join?" And my mom would tell her, "No, that you should leave me." You know why? My mom was excited. She was happy. I was reading the Bible. <laughs> I don't know what came, I don't know what, what, what the thoughts on her mind at that point. She was happy I was reading the Bible. So she would tell my sister, no, don't worry, what do you want? Okay, I will assist you, I will help you. <laughs> Little did she know <clears throat> that I was just enjoying the stories. <laughs> I was reading the text. I didn't have a deeper knowledge of the scriptures at that point. The text, there was no spiritual interpretation of anyone. Of course, I can agree that um, some of those texts, of course, the knowledge of the events, I mean, there was some impact then, but not the kind of impact God expects of a believer. Praise the Lord. Now, <clears throat> having said that, it is important for us to understand that it is in the place of meditation that God gives us the secrets that is required for us to attain that height that we can say, yes, the word of God. And not just the text. Let's read the Bible. In the book of Matthew, chapter 13, verse 10 to 11. The disciples were asking Jesus Christ. They said, why do you speak in parables? They asked him in verse 10. And in verse 11, he replied. He said, the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. 
verse 14 says, In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, You will be ever hearing, but not understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. You can be reading the text, but not seeing the word of God. Let me give us another example. Do you know that you can be in an atmosphere of sermon, you know, a pastor preaching a particular sermon, and the Holy Spirit will be interpreting something different from what he's saying. The Holy Spirit will be giving you a different perspective of what he's saying. He himself is trying to transfer a different perspective to you. But the Holy Spirit can actually be speaking something different. You'll be picking something different from what he's saying. It is the word of God, which means that a whole lot of us go to church and come back empty-handed. We only just download what the man of God has said, not what the Holy Spirit interprets to us through the man of God. It's important for us to understand that. And that is why the word of God is dynamic in nature. Now, what is the level that a text that we read gets, I mean, becomes the word of from God to us. It is when we understand the truth in the text, the principles and the precepts. That is when the text becomes a word in our heart. And we can only do that in the place of meditation. So it does not just end at we just memorizing the scriptures and just putting it in our mind. No, it, it, I mean, it, it starts when we begin to meditate on that line of scriptures. What does this mean to me? You know, you begin to understand. The Holy Spirit begin to tell you what it means. Now, do we understand that a man of God can pick a verse of the Bible, preach about something. Another man of God pick that same verse, preach about something else entirely. Another man of God pick the same verse. Ten men of God, the same verse, different sermon. Why? Because the word of God is dynamic. The text, the text is a guideline to the word of God. Because in the text, the Holy Spirit can tell us so many things. Praise the Lord. So it is in the place of meditating and understanding, having a deeper knowledge, a deeper meaning to the text that we read. That is when we can hide that meaning in our heart it is the meaning of the scripture that we read the interpretation the divine interpretation of the scriptures that we can hide in our heart and that is the it is that principle it is that truth that will guide us from going the ways that god will not want us to go as believers praise the lord so I, 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 the Proverbs um, um, 23 verse 7 says, As a man thinketh, it is not as a man reads. As a man thinketh, which means you must have read. And then the reading now becomes your thinking. As believers, we are supposed to become the scriptures, not just knowing the scriptures. We become the scriptures. We read the scriptures. The Holy Spirit interprets the scriptures to us. We have an understanding of what the scripture is. The text becomes truth to us we begin to live the truth the revelation that we have of that text is the word of god praise the lord i um i want to believe that um, no matter how short this this is the holy spirit would would have spoken to someone today and as you begin to give time to studying the word of God and meditating, God will reveal more to us. He will give us more revelations and more insights.